Hi there people of YouTube, back again with another bit about the uh, rear deck. Um, although I think it probably applies to all these diversity systems that are built on the same RX5808 receiver. So that's the, the rear deck, the TrueD, the, the Forge, et all, seem to be using the same fork of firmware based on a particular receiver. And the problem with the receiver is when you pair it with one of these immersion 600 milliwatts VTXs. I said before that I wanted to go out and try and fly my wing, which has got one of these in it, and compare the two receivers. Uh, because I took my big quad out, which has also got one of these in, and I seemed to get a very dodgy picture when I was testing out uh, my new Farfly 7S with it. So here is the result of that. And we're starting off here with the rear lac. There's a couple of sort of noise lines from the ESC. But the things to look at are the way you've got this kind of flickery light banding thing at the top and the bottom. And also you've got a bit of screen tearing uh, along the top there. This is it's actually a better picture than I had previously when I did my wing uh, flight, where I thought I had the, the dodgy receiver and actually sent it back there. So things get worse as we go further out. So I'm just going to speed up here to where around the kilometre mark. Now ignore the general interference because we've just gone where some houses are and I think we're picking up something from them. But look what happens when we turn back and it has to try and handle this light. We've got this big screen rippling and tearing and the light handling is just all over the place so I don't know why it's um, yeah it's it's worse light and we're flying directly into it but it really shouldn't do anything with the picture so quite why this is going on is uh, I don't think it's down to receiver so to prove that I went back and landed so I went out and repeated this test using my Fatshark Next Wave um, receiver. And here are the results here. Now, straight away you can see that the colour seems to be a bit different. We're still getting a, a few lines from the ESC when I'm using high throttle. Curious, curious sort of conditions on the day. There was kind of a low mist and it made everything, I think, have some moist air. So the range and the interference was more than I thought. But you should be able to see that there's no weird or white sort of flickering at the top of the bottom there's no screen tearing the picture just seems generally stable and if we again go out to where we're up to about uh, a kilometre in fact I went out to 1500 metres instead of a uh, 1k just to have a look uh, and as we come back into the sun here really curious effect where the sun is lighting up that uh, that mist what we're not getting is any of the screen tearing or the, the the general dodginess that we were seeing before and I've, I've tried to make it roughly the same flight about a kilometer at around a hundred ish meters And we're back with a safe landing. So what's the issue? Um, I don't know. And why does anybody care? The reason I care is I've got five of these currently in planes and a big quad. Um, in the beginning, when I was starting FPV in about 2012, so I need to come up to um, five years now, there was a choice. You had this Boscam 200 milliwatt uh, eight channel. Can't remember what band it's on, possibly band A. Um, or the much more expensive Immersion RC 600. Now I started off with these and you have to get a separate receiver but I like the convenience factor of being able to have an internal receiver in the goggles because there was there was nothing for this, you had to have an external receiver at that time. Of course the, the sort of more modern Boscan receiver looks like this and is 40 channels uh, and included the, the, the F band and you can pick that up fine with the internal receiver. But these don't seem to be happy 
with any other type of receiver. And this used to happen, I think, back when the Sky Zone goggles first came out and advertised the fact that they could pick up all the channels. I remember my friend Rich, Flyboy C, having one of those, and I was out flying, and he was telling me that his picture was terrible, and how could I fly through this screen tearing? And I was like, I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. And it's only just come back to me as being, perhaps this is the same sort of issue as we're seeing now, which for whatever reason never got resolved. Either Immersion RC is using some sort of different spec with this particular one, um, or well, or I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing that's the thing. There's something weird in this which doesn't affect other things. Now, last time someone wrote in the comments that they were using the 200 milliwatt version, and that was absolutely fine. I went as far as to um, writing an email to Furious FPV, the makers of the TrueD, because their version 3 is getting a lot of praise from everybody. And I said, I had problems with the real ACK, which I understand is, is based around the same uh, firmware fork and hardware. Do you have a problem with the immersion? And he came back, uh, well, one of the techs came back and said, not a problem, I use the Tramp HV all the way up to 600 and that's all fine. The Tramp uh, is a 40 channel VTX which I'm guessing is a bit different to this one. So I've asked a question, yes but you know, sorry to nitpick, what about one of these? Does this work? Um, and they didn't come back and I found a, a few more posts in things like RC groups and things saying about compatibility between these and other receivers and it still comes back with some sort of incompatibility. It used to be that when these 40 channel receivers first came out they weren't quite on the immersion frequencies but they are now but they just don't seem to work just with this VTX. Now the reason I put this out there is because I'd love to be proved wrong and for someone to say yeah mine's working fine with insert name of diversity receiver here because I'd really like to have a 40 channel receiver um, I like being able to uh, band scan and use diversity on my goggles um, and basically have 40 channels so when people are um, flying on other bands I can actually see them because obviously the next wave receiver only uses the F or immersion band with 8 channels. So if it's working for you on any of the systems uh, the Trudy, the Furious, the Relac, anything else, I'd love to know about it to understand why mine isn't. And of course, if you're thinking of buying one of these diversity systems or just using on their own is, is quite a good system if it's working for you, and you're never intending to use one of these, absolutely fine. I've used sort of four or five of the sort of cheapy Chinese type 40 to 48 channels like the Amway, the Boscam, the Sky Zone, uh, some other one. And they're all absolutely fine on the immersion frequencies, on any other frequencies. They work well and the diversity system of the Relac works well. The switching works brilliant and I really can't tell the difference when it switches. So that's good. If you're not ever using one of these, brilliant. Thumbs up for you. You'll have a great time. For me, who wants to fly planes um, using diversity on the goggles, I'm still a bit shafted and I haven't got a solution yet. The one from, or the, the, the diversity system from Fat Shark itself is based on a single receiver and is antenna diversity. Now I've not seen it in operation, but the way I understand it will work is it will switch to the other antenna if the signal is bad. But because it doesn't know the RSSI of what that's going to be like, um, I feel it's going to get in a situation where it's bad on the one antenna, I'll switch to the other, that's bad, I'll switch back, oh that's still bad, I'll switch, and you just get in a situation of switching between them. So that's not something it seems like you can fly to the extent of the range, that's more of a, again, a, a mini quad situation, it's like okay it's maybe he's going behind a tree, we'll try flicking to the patch and then go back to the Omni. So yeah, nothing for me other than a ground station which I really don't want to have. If you know of a better solution, I'd really be pleased to have it. Uh, 
but for now I'm I'm keeping these because you know I paid a lot for them and they work really well. Um, I just have to not have diversity. Sad face. There you go. Anyway, catch you later. Bye.